Now we're going to talk about the different sections of the Google Sheet and how it can be adjusted so different inputs on the quad stick can control different outputs or buttons in the game. So here we're zoomed in on a specific section of the spreadsheet. In the blue section, it'll show you the input or control on the quad stick, in this case, the left sip on the mouthpiece, and the yellow section will show you what that control on the quad stick will activate in the game. So in this section, in this row, you can see that left sip is lined up with L1 or left bumper in the game. So when the person does a left sip on the quad stick, you have to control L1 in the game. And similarly, you can see below that left puff on the mouthpiece is lined up with L2 or left trigger in the game. So when the user does a left puff on the quad stick, it will control the left trigger in the game. This middle section here we'll talk a little bit more about later, but this can actually change the behavior of the button in the game. And this can be adjusted so that when the button is activated in the game, it acts differently than a normal button would act. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in a later video. Within the drop down menus of the Google Sheet under the Quad Stick section, you'll see all of the controls that are available to activate on the Quad Stick. Anything starting in the letters MP stands for mouthpiece, so it corresponds to a control activated on the three sip and puffs or mouthpiece of the quad stick. So as you can see here, center puff is a control activated on the mouthpiece of the quad stick. Anything not starting with MP it corresponds to a control not corresponding to the mouthpiece. So right here, right sip and right puff does not start with MP and these actually correspond to the side tube of the quad stick or the furthest right sip and puff. Lip corresponds to the lip button that's present below the mouthpiece on the quad stick, and left, right, up, and down correspond to the joystick movement on the quad stick. And as you can see here, some of the inputs on the mouthpiece end in the word soft. So these correspond to soft sips or soft blows or blows with less pressure for those specific inputs on the quad stick to activate different controls in the game. In the yellow column, you'll have different drop downs for the different controls that can be activated on the controller. And all of the controls corresponding to the controller should be present here in the drop down menu. So by default, it will list the outputs as they're shown on, as a, on a PlayStation controller. So X here corresponds to the X button on the PlayStation controller, not the Xbox controller. If you want to change this so it's easier to program for Xbox games, you can click up here to the drop down menu and click Xbox outputs. And this will change it so instead of showing the buttons for PlayStation controller, it'll actually change them for Xbox controllers to make it easier to program for Xbox games. Now I'm going to talk about how to change these controls to make a different input or control on the quad stick activate a different button in the game. So if I want to change the control on the quad stick, I can go to the section I want to change. And I can either go to the drop down menu and scroll through to find the specific control I want to activate on the quad stick. So if I want to, for example, make the control left and center sip to activate L1 in the game, I can use the drop down menu to find it. Alternatively, I can start to type it in. And as I start to type it in, it'll show me the options and I can click on it to change the control. Similarly, if I want to change the control activated in the game, let's say I want to change this to L3 instead of L1, I can use the drop down menu, scroll up and down to find it, and find L3. Or I can start typing it in. As I type it in, I can select it and change it to L3. So now left and center puff on the quad stick controls L3 in the game. Now let's say I'm playing a game where there's a situation where two buttons need to be held down at the same time. The quad stick can actually be programmed so one input or control on the quad stick can simultaneously press two buttons down in a game. So let's say there's a game where I need to press L3 and R3 down at the same time. So I can set both controls, L3 and R3, in my left column here. So L3 and R3 are right here. R3 
as you can see here, is highlighted yellow. That's because I already have it listed in my spreadsheet. This isn't an error message. It's just a warning telling me that it's already listed. It'll still allow me to load it on the quad stick. It'll just make you aware that you already have it listed somewhere else in your spreadsheet. And here, in order for me to make one control activate both L3 and R3 at the same time, I will set the same control for both of the outputs. So if I want center SIP to activate both L3 and R3 at the same time, so both the buttons are held down together, I will make center SIP the input control on the quad stick for both of those two outputs. And as you can see here, this is also highlighted in yellow, just warning me that it is listed twice in my spreadsheet, but it'll still allow me to download it onto my quad stick. The other thing that should be changed when making adjustments to the quad stick spreadsheets is this section right here. So under the first tab within your game profile, you'll see a .csv file. This is the file name that will be loaded onto the quad stick when you download it onto your quad stick using the quad stick manager program. The reason this name is important is because depending on the name, it'll change the order that your file is loaded onto the quad stick. To show an example of this, here you'll see all of the files that are loaded onto my quad stick currently. As you can see here, default always shows up as number one. So if I name my file name default.csv, it'll always load up as the first profile on my quad stick when I plug it in. After that, all of the profiles go in alphabetical order. So depending on what name I name my quad stick.csv file, it'll change which order it shows up when I switch between files, game files on my quad stick. So back in this sheet here, if I want this to be my default profile on my quad stick, I'll have to change the name to default and not COD. So if I change it to default and then load it onto my quad stick by going to extensions, quad stick, download to quad stick, Now, as you can see here, my profile, which I renamed default profile, overwrote the previous default profile that was on my quad stick before. So now my Call of Duty profile is downloaded onto my quad stick as my default profile. If I were to go back and change the name to a different file name, it'd be downloaded based off of alphabetical order, as I said previously. So that's why naming the quad stick file different names is really important when downloading files onto your quad stick. So pay attention to this name and make sure you name it something so you want it to correspond to a specific location on your quad stick files. Remember that for every single large game profile on the quad stick within the Google Sheet, you have multiple pages that are present that you can also change the controls on. So depending on which profile you're on, the same control on the quad stick can control different buttons in the game. So for example, on my first small profile, the center puff could be the circle button, but on my second small profile, the center puff could be the X button. So this allows less inputs on the quad stick to control more outputs or buttons in the game, depending on what profile you're on. So remember to change all of the sheets as well, if needed, to maximize the number of controls you can put on a single large game profile.